Welcome to Firewise in the Classroom, Chapter 3, The Biomes of Minnesota. A biome is a major community of plants and animals with similar life forms and similar environmental conditions. In Minnesota, you might hear a biome referred to as an ecological section. Copy this definition into your user guide now. Pause the video if you need to. In Minnesota, we have four main biomes. You'll see these same pictures in your student guide. The Laurentian mixed forest is known as our pine forests, and that's located in the northeast portion of the state. The eastern broadleaf forest is also known as our hardwood forests, and that follows along the center to the southeastern portion of the state. The tall grass aspen parklands is a pocket in the northwestern part of the state that's a transition zone from the prairies to the forests. And finally, the prairie parklands biome on the western and southwestern portion of the state is where most of our grasslands occur. This is also the key area for agriculture. You can see with the county overlays of where you live lines up with the biomes. So the biomes, of course, which are collections of similar plants and animals, are affected by topography. On the right-hand side is a topographic map of Minnesota, again showing the changes in elevation and the features on the landscape. And you can see quite broadly that the biome boundaries match the topography boundaries. Let's dive deeper into each of the four biomes, starting with the Laurentian mixed forest or the pine biome. If you're walking through the woods, this is likely what you'll see. The northeastern portion of the state is the least settled, meaning the fewest number of people live there, and there are the largest number of public lands. The forest canopy is large with many mature trees. There's a very thick mixture of both fine and heavy fuels. You can see why a forest like this would burn. Plenty of fuel, tightly packed, and not many things on the landscape to stop the spread of the fire. Describe the Laurentian mixed forest biome in your student guide now using a few keywords. Pause the video if you need. The eastern broadleaf or hardwoods forest biome occurs in the central and the southeastern portion of the state. This type of forest or biome is quite different. First of all, you'll see that you don't have the heavy fuels that you had in the northeast portion of the state. Trees are generally smaller in diameter, they grow, don't grow as tall, and these are hardwood trees instead of coniferous or needled trees. You'll also see that the understory, the bushes, the grasses, other things nearer the ground, is much more open than it is in the northeast portion of the state. Fire here would travel more slowly because there's less fuel to burn and the fuel is spaced further apart. Also, this area occurs in a lower, wetter region of Minnesota. Many more rivers and streams and lower elevations. All those things reduce the effect and intensity of fire. Write some of the keyword descriptions about the eastern broadleaf forest biome in your student guide now. The tall grass aspen parklands biome is unique not only to Minnesota, but really throughout the United States. It's a transition between the prairie parklands and the forests. It sits on glacial Lake Agassiz, which is a very broad and flat area in the northwestern portion of the state. You can actually drive for over a mile and only see six inches in changes in elevation. 
this very broad and flat landscape is harsh and any kind of wind or precipitation or sun affects everything in its path. The tall grass aspen parklands area is defined primarily by fine fuels, seas of grass, and pockets of smaller stunted trees, mostly aspens and some oaks. You can see that these heavy fuels, the trees, have quite small diameters. They're not nearly as large as the coniferous or the hardwood forest biomes in the state. They also are not very tall. Because of how flat the area is and the number of fine fuels, fires can get started and move very quickly in the tall grass aspens. But they don't tend to last very long because they consume the fuels quickly. Take a few minutes in your student guide to write down some key points about the tall grass aspen parklands. Pause the video as needed. The prairie parklands biome is a sea of grass. It covers all of the western portion of the state as well as the southwest corner. Some of the most fertile agricultural land in the United States is found in this area. The prairie parklands is large open spaces with rolling hills, mostly fine fuels, very few heavy fuels, and where there are, they are clustered in pockets on the landscape. Again, because this is such a fertile ground for agriculture, most of the prairie parklands actually have more farms than prairie. Less than 1% of the natural vegetation remains. When we talk about topography of an area, these rolling hills that now have farms on most of them have a natural way of stopping fire. The farms serve as land breaks themselves, square farm fields, fence lines, roads, ditches. All of these topographic features help stop fire. Take a few minutes now to write down keywords of the Prairie Parklands biome in your user guide. Pause the video if you need to. So you can see how biomes influence wildland fire, the vegetation, the lay of the land, the way that weather affects the landscape. All of these affect how a fire burns. Answer the two questions now in your student user guide. Which biome do you think has the greatest risk of fire and why? Which biome has the least risk of fire? and why. When you've finished answering the questions, you've reached the end of chapter three, Biomes of Minnesota.